We're here today in the Amphibolite's important bird area. Uh, it's kind of a strange name. Some folks don't know what Amphibolite means. It's actually the, the geology underlaying these peaks here in Northwest North Carolina. Amphibolite Nice is the, the geology that underlays it. It's an interesting geology because it creates some more neutral soils. Uh, most of the mountains have very acid soils. And here in the Amphibolites, uh, we have kind of a more, a more basic type soil. Uh, it tends to keep rid of, uh, get rid of a lot of the rhododendron understory, so the woods tend to be a little more open, um, creating really nice habitat for things like rose-breasted grosbeak, um, roughed grouse in a lot of places uh, do really well here in the Amphibolites. And of course, it's a really good spot for golden wing warblers. Um, in fact, it's such a good spot for golden wing warblers that recently the National Important Bird Areas Technical Committee uh, approved the Amphibolites IBA as a globally significant site for golden wing warblers. Now there's other stuff here in this IBA as well. It's not uh, an IBA just for golden wings. You may hear Vesper Sparrows in the background uh, while we're talking today. Um, also yellow-bellied sapsucker is here, Canada warbler, and a whole suite of species that are high conservation concern in North Carolina. Of course, one of the things that always comes up when you're talking about bird conservation is the historical context. You know, was this, was this land always this way, or were these birds always here, and were they here in the same numbers, uh, say 30, 40, 50, 200 years ago? Um, that discussion comes up a lot with early successional species, because here in especially the southern Appalachians, uh, of course, 100 years ago or, or a little better, um, most of this area was being really heavily logged, and that was followed by periods of really intense wildfire, extreme erosion on the mountaintops, that kind of stuff. And so probably around the 1920s, 1930s, there may have been a lot more of this kind of habitat in Western North Carolina. Um, golden wing warblers, we don't know, but may have been more plentiful back then when there was uh, a little bit less forest than there is now. Western North Carolina is in a, a period of what we call afforestation, where, where the forest is regenerating to, to cover some of these places that were denuded um, during the early part of the 20th century. Audubon and the American Bird Conservancy have put together a, a watch list and golden wing warblers are a red watch list species, one of the higher conservation concern species, so that in itself is a, is a reason to be concerned. Um, but also, we need to learn a lot more about this habitat and about maintaining this habitat. Um, you know, in western North Carolina, most of this habitat is on private lands and there's not a lot of it, 100,000 acres or so of early successional habitats. And so the more we can learn about it, the better it's going to be uh, for, for managing for these habitats. Um, you know, there's lots of options on ways to create this habitat, either to, to do it out of, um, you know, intact forest through intensive management or to, to maintain what we've got or let uh, even lower successional stages like grassland kind of age up into this. Um, but there's a lot of ways to, to get to this habitat. And we need to figure out what are the most efficient ways, the ways it can be done well on private land as well as public land. Um, and so it's important for us to kind of figure out exactly what's good for golden wings, but also for the other species that are here in this habitat. Of course, uh, Audubon's Common Birds in Decline list that came out in 2008 listed several species that like this kind of habitat, things like here in North Carolina, Field Sparrow, uh, Northern Bob White. Uh, a number of those species love this kind of habitat and are in really significant decline uh, in North Carolina and across their range. So the more we can learn about this kind of habitat and how to maintain it and do it in an efficient way, uh, the better. So of course, this golden wing warbler work uh, doesn't happen. It doesn't happen for Audubon, North Carolina, in a vacuum. We obviously have to uh, uh, thank our funding sources for it, including uh, private donors, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, uh, National Wildlife Foundation, uh, Cornell Laboratory of Ornithology. And so we're we're really fortunate to have so many folks coming together to work on what's my favorite bird right now. So. <laughs>